I'm just editing some video I took earlier in the week when I visited one of the RF's old bomber airfields. All the buildings have now gone, the rest areas of runway still there. I've also received some video from the Lincolnshire Aviation Heritage Centre from Bradley the engineer uh, on the restoration of the Lancaster NX611 just Jane. So I'll put that on the end of the airfield shots. Bye for now and thanks for watching. Point five miles east of Lincoln, this farmland in 1942 was turned into RAF Fiskerton. It was a bomber command station. Opened January 1943 with two squadrons, number 49 squadron and 576. Both operated Avro Lancaster. Fiskerton was a satellite to RAF Scampton, six miles away. Fiskerton had three runways. Class A standard configuration. Areas of concrete runway are still visible, but buildings long gone. 76 years have passed since 1945. Orion Fiskerton was one of 15 airfields to be fitted with FIDO, Fog Investigation Dispersal Organisation. A series of pipes laid above ground either side the full length of the runway Petrol fed into the pipes under pressure. Every three feet a series of spray nozzles sprayed petrol into the air. To ignite Fido, a group of men spaced down the whole length of the runway with flaming torches lighting the petrol. Men on cycles with flaming torches igniting the petrol as they drove down the runway. A jeep with a flaming torch sticking out the side driving all the full length of the runway, lighting the petrol as it went down. It had to burn for about 10 minutes for it to work. The heat from the flames evaporated the suspended fog droplets, so there would be a clearing in the fog directly over the runway. In November 1940, the fog formed and Fido was fired up to help 400 bombers land safely. I was unable to find out how many landed at Oria Fiskerton. In December 44, another foggy landing and Fido was used again. This time 704 planes landed safely with the aid of Fido. No record of how many planes were diverted to Fiskerton. But Fido burned for three hours at Oria Fiskerton, burning a colossal amount of petrol. 188,000 gallons. At a year 2021 prices in England, you would not get much change out of one million pounds. Petrol in the 1940s was a shilling or one and up to one and threepence per gallon. That would cost you around about 10,000 pounds for the night's burn. To save one Lancaster would be cost effective. The Lancasters cost £60,000 each. To correct the crews down safely, immeasurable. Aircraft losses at Fiskerton 576 Squadron, 38 Lancasters. 49 Squadron, 79 Lancasters. A total of 117 Lancasters failed to return to RAF Fiskerton. The two airfields I have visited so far, RAF Scallingthorpe and RAF Fiskerton, the losses of Lancasters alone mounts to 304 failed to return.
Hello, Nev. Hello, the rest of the free world. How are you all? Um, Nev, a quick update, mate. Fairly self apparent. Yesterday, we managed to get the tail planes on, followed by the fins, and of course, the elevators. All in one day. Not bad going that. So, if you have a quick peek in here, refitted the torque tube this morning so that's the elevators connected to each other and then you've got the operating control rod beneath the tailplane disappearing forward to pick up and the control run down the port side at some point today hopefully we'll get the fins fitted sorry belay that the rudders and then also in the back here we've got the crawl way for the down which the rear gunner used again access to the turret so that for the time being is more than enough i think yeah that's good that so yeah. nearly a minute of footage another thing we've been working on nev as you see these are the chin cowlings for three of the engines and the tropical ones are fitted with this device here and when you open these out you take these pins out when you open them out you get to flaps that are spring loaded and they sit against the radiator to help in colder climates um, and because we're having trouble with moisture in the oil during the taxi runs which is why we took the props apart to make sure they weren't uh, going rusty which they weren't so something we're doing is right probably taking its high power but the um another thing that we're doing is opening these up to block the flow through the radiators to help it warm up quicker and then stay at a higher temperature to bring the engine uh, get the engine hotter so hopefully it'll work so these haven't been open for about 50 years so they took a bit of freeing off these pins but they're quite quite heavily spring loaded uh, and all of the springs are, are good so it's a bonus <laughs> okay here we go then <laughs> Video 82. Yeah, no, it's recorded now. It's recorded now. I thought it's on pause. No, you got it on now, Les. Okay, take two. <laughs> John, talk us through what you're doing, old chap. <laughs> well, we're jacking the, 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 the back end of the Lancaster up. He was going to say to awesome. Enough, to give us enough room to stick the two, tail Elio up through the hole. Leo. This is the hole, yeah? What is it? Got it, Les? Absolutely. And over there to your right on the pallet, the tail oh yeah. Thank you, Trips. Pleasure, old chap. Tuck together. Okay, we've got Jerbs just about to wheel in the old tail oleo. Tail wheel oleo installation. Take three. That was a good one, that wasn't it? Ready? Okie dokie. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, can you go down any further, Jeb? We're on the deck now. <sighs> no. no. Still again. Do you have to get the valve cap off? Because that's got a little tit on the end, which. And here we go. Here we go. Taking a valve cap off to make access a little bit easier. Spigot into the. Ah oh, yes, Mr. Spigot. Shall yeah. I? Shall I? Guide. I shall guide the spigot. Spigot. Yes. Spigot by name. Spigot by name. Stop, 
forward again. No, we're up against the stop. How's that, John? And here we have John hoovering out the jacuzzi for the summer season. job because it, as you can see the turret actually goes inside the fuselage at the back so what you've got to do is when you when you put it in you've got to push the bottom of the turret backwards and have the top of the turret forward so it slips in and then bring the top backwards back safe again thanks to Jerb, John, Les and Bradley for making and sending us the video so that we can keep informed on what's going on. Thanks lads. Another way to keep informed on what is happening at East Kirby is to join the Rivet Club. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.